I got a brand new laptop. Check this out. Okay, so I... <laughs> <laughs> I kind of fibbed. Not exactly a brand new laptop. It is my daughter's school laptop that is probably five, six years old. It can't even run Minecraft. And I have turned it into one of the coolest little home automation media center. It, it's incredible what I've made, managed to do with it. And I want to share everything to hopefully give you some ideas. If you have an old PC laying around, or you just want to check out some of the cool stuff you can do maybe with your main primary machine. The main reason I wanted to do this is because one, I am cheap as hell. And I feel like I don't talk about that side of things enough because I have uh, what is seemingly a lot of like expensive gear and stuff like that. I don't like paying for subscriptions. I don't like spending a lot of money on things. Uh, I like hoarding money and I like hoarding assets uh, much more than I enjoy spending them and living this kind of like crazy luxurious lifestyle. So that is the primary reason why I wanted to do this. And also the laptop was just going to go to waste. It was probably going to be sold or given away. I could try and fix it up, but the parts alone are probably worth more than just buying a new laptop. So to save money and to repurpose what would have been a completely useless machine, here's what I did. The first thing was connecting a HDMI cable because I don't want to have to use this thing. The hinge is broken. I don't want to be flipping it up and tilting it and trying to, I don't want to deal with that. So the first thing I had to do was make sure that the laptop worked with the lid closed. I also got rid of all Windows bloatware. Now, I know what a lot of people are gonna be thinking throughout this video, especially now, why don't you just use Linux because you don't have to worry about the bloatware and it's probably like got 101 options that I didn't even think about. I've only just started learning coding languages and stuff like that. I made 30 free tools that are available through my site, herovibes.store, and that was kind of like a teaser, a taster of how to use JavaScript and CSS and HTML and put all these things together. I started learning a bit of Python and, and that was my learning curve. But I'm nowhere near confident in like just whipping up Linux on a, a machine or even a VM and trying to do things that way. That's not... <laughs> That's out of my depth right now. But once I did that, I got the Windows bloatware off. I got the laptop so that I could use it completely hands-free, not having to worry about the laptop screen and all that kind of stuff. We had to get started with the software. So at this point, we had a blank canvas. My first priority, weirdly, as, as a gamer, as well as a tech enthusiast, was getting emulators working on this thing. This was my, my, my first goal. So to get started with this, I downloaded RetroArch. And for those of you who don't know, it's kind of like a piece of software that can also have a bunch of emulators inside of it. That's the gist of it. And then you can run like GameCube games and Nintendo DS and Game Boy and stuff like that. That was the main draw for me, knowing that I could get all the games that I loved growing up as a kid and I could share them with my family because this was going to be on the big screen, the living room TV, which we all share, and I get to then share my experiences with them. I should probably say that this isn't going to be like a step-by-step -step guide on how to install each of these things, because I just followed a bunch of YouTube tutorials to get half of the stuff working, um, and I had to spend a lot of the time troubleshooting for the rest of it. <laughs> uh, you can probably do this yourself. If there's anything you see that interests you, and there'll be chapters down below, uh, just Google it, check it out on YouTube, there'll be a guide somewhere. So at that point, I had DS games, I had Game Boy games, Nintendo 64 games, GameCube games, and for a laptop that couldn't run Minecraft, it actually did surprisingly well and could run GameCube stuff. I can play Wind Waker on this machine if I want to. So that was cool, but I wanted to try and take it a step further. Retro games are great, but I want to play AAA titles on the PC that can't play Minecraft. Uh, kind of a, <laughs> kind of a, a, a dream at that point. But then I started looking at the cloud gaming. It's not perfect, okay? <laughs> I will admit that. Cloud gaming is, it either works okay, or it's absolutely terrible. There's there's not much room between the two. And I think I got it closer to the okay spectrum. There's still a little bit of latency. There's still some weird moments where the controller like not cuts out, but it holds like the left stick too long or doesn't take a button input correctly. But I can now play Expedition 33 or Doom the Dark Ages through Game Pass and Xbox Cloud Streaming on a PC that can't even play Minecraft. It is worth saying that even if you don't want that latency, you still want to play the AAA games, but you're more of a PC gamer, consider checking out Streamlink. Steamlink? Steamlink, that's what it's called. 
<laughs> so I actually have a gaming PC that I use for like video editing and stuff over there. I can then use Steam Link to send the video and the game over to my second PC through local Wi-Fi. So the latency is like pretty much non-existent. And that means I can play any AAA game on my gaming PC on the laptop. Now that's kind of cheating in a way because you still need the fancy gaming PC to be able to stream to the other one. But the idea is to just run everything on a laptop. So you could do that. But again, cloud gaming was the big achievement for me for this laptop. Steam actually has this really cool controller setup. I don't know exactly what it's called, Steam Input or something, which essentially meant that I could connect my Xbox controller to the laptop and control everything through the Xbox controller. So I didn't need a mouse or a keyboard or anything like that. However, it wasn't perfect. So I had to figure out another way of being able to interact with the laptop without needing to whip open the lid or use the Xbox controller. I wanted like a little trackpad and you can buy things on Amazon like this, which I'll link down below in the description, which you could just have on your lap while sitting on the sofa and that would work fine. But what I did is I downloaded an app called Unified Remote, which I hadn't really heard of, but there were good popular reviews about it online. So I gave it a go and the free functions are pretty cool. You can control the mouse in a typical fashion, like with some other cheaper apps, but this just works so well. There's no setup. There's no connecting to it. When you open the app, it's just app start moving your mouse that's it it also has a really cool keyboard feature and you can control apps within the laptop you can start windows applications you can control chrome you can access netflix and disney plus if you have the apps installed on your laptop now some of those features are paid ones but the paid version of the app i think was seven pounds or eight pounds or something like that a really tiny cost and it's lifetime it's not a subscription it's, it's you do this and you get access to every single feature on the phone and it's connected to your app store account so you can also share it with a family member if they're using the same thing or use an ipad and i love this this is one of the coolest innovations and there's even a screen sharing thing which kind of works like you can see the screen and interact with things but it isn't as good as other software like any viewer or parsec i really love parsec it kind of bugs out the screen sometimes but parsec by far is one of the coolest things and we'll talk more about that in a bit so at that point, I was pretty chuffed with myself. I was like, okay, cool. We got the game set up. I can access this thing without needing to buy any secondary devices. Let's set up a media server. And for this, the only solution for me really was Plex because I've just had such a great experience with it in the past. Plex, putting it as simply as possible, is like a little piece of software that just sits on your laptop. It runs 24 seven and any movies or series or even music and stuff like that that you have on a specific folder, you can access through your laptop or through any device connected to your Wi-Fi. So as an example, I installed Plex on the laptop. I put some movies on there. I put some series and stuff that I am into. And now I can actually just bring up the app on my phone. Anybody in the house with any device, my kids on their tablets can go and watch Bluey if I have it downloaded on the laptop. And this completely eliminates the need for subscriptions like Netflix and Disney Plus and Prime Video and Apple TV and all the other things that we pay for. And I want to do like a little tally at the end on how much we're actually going to be saving by using this. And I think you can actually pay, I think it's like two pound a month or something like that for this Plex premium thing where you can access everything on your laptop's media server while you're away from home. So you're not limited to being local, <laughs> kind of like a VPN. Speaking of VPNs, I actually installed my own on this laptop and I use it with split tunneling. So essentially I can pick and choose which applications get access to the VPN and which ones don't. And I needed this because I wanted Firefox to have access to the VPN and a couple of other bits of software, whereas others I didn't like N8N. Now this is the big thing that I, I am so proud of that I've been able to do with this laptop. Okay, so N8N, for those of you who don't know, uh, is an automation software. So think of like the most boring mundane task that you have to do in your life right now. Sending emails to your boss, uh, getting a specific link from a Google sheet that you need to put into a YouTube video description, or why is it when you need to think of things? As an example, you can't think of things. <laughs> Checking your calendar to see when you have an event coming up or texting your girlfriend good morning because you love her. 
um, that's that's what I set up with this. And N8N is typically a paid service. So N8N typically costs around about 20 pounds a month. Make, which was my automation software that I was using beforehand alongside Zapier and IFTTT, they also cost you know, 10, 15, 20 quid per package. And these are all the ones that I was paying for. This is how much I pay for N8N. It's free. And let's say hypothetically, I want a link to the Elgato Capture Neo that I need to put into my YouTube description. I just simply send a message through Telegram. It runs the whole process for me. The AI does its business and I just get the link sent back to me on Telegram. And I can get that through the laptop. I can get that through my phone. Anywhere that I have access to Telegram, I can use it. So setting N8N up typically involves using Linux. Now, like I said, this is a Windows machine. I'm not too familiar with Linux. So what I had to do was download Docker. Now with Docker, you can run what I assume, I don't know if I'm saying all the correct phrases and terminology, but it's like an instanced, a kind of virtual version of N8N, which is available to the public. And then through using that version of N8N, you can connect it with another piece of software or another tool called Ngrok. But just using those two tools, using Docker and Ngrok and like five different YouTube tutorials, you can set up the system where you are hosting N8N yourself and you can just connect it to any service that you want without paying a penny. And this is, I assume, permanent. You don't have to worry about anything. If you're connecting it to ChatGPT, you may have to connect it to an API. And that thought of connecting it to an API kind of concerned me at first because I was like, oh, I, I've got to pay for things. I already pay for Gemini Pro, which is kind of like an all-in-one service that comes with a bunch of Google stuff. I was apprehensive about paying for another, but then you add it up and I'm like 5 million tokens isn't going to be more than a couple of dollars or pounds. I, I'm fine doing that. It's actually cheaper than what I'm paying for now and it has more possibilities. So I don't have to pay for Gemini Pro now. <laughs> So at this stage, we had the emulators set up. We had the home media server set up. We got all the games we need, all the movies and stuff we need. Uh, we got VPN and protection and security and everything else going on. And then we have N8N, which is our automation software. What else can we do? Well, like I said, I don't like using the laptop and sometimes controlling all of that stuff through a phone is a bit of a pain in the backside. So I actually just set it up so that I could use my main PC to control the laptop. Now this isn't really techy, anybody can do this, but I use Parsec for this, like I said earlier on, and that is just a piece of software that sits on this machine and it sits on the laptop. This, like many other pieces of software that do a similar thing, lets you get a live remote view of the laptop and you can interact with it as if you were on that machine. I also set up a system where I can share the files specifically without even having to open Parsec or AnyViewer or something like that. So that if I just want to drag and drop a movie from this PC and put it onto the laptop, I can do that in seconds. Something else I did was get a four terabyte hard drive and connect it to the laptop. So the media server, the games, everything that we have going on, it's not limitless, but the, I don't see myself using more than four terabytes for video games and <laughs> movies anytime soon. And like I said, all of that I can connect to and I can use by sitting at my normal chair and my normal- I'm not no quite sure how to help you with that. I'm sorry, did I ask you for your- I can control all of that uh, sat at my desk. Started using it as a storage for all of my archived footage and things like that. Just being able to transfer it to a different machine and not even have to worry about it. I can also access those files on my phone. So I don't need to pay for Google Drive anymore. That's, that's another one. <laughs> There's also a couple of little things that I did. I set up a Minecraft server so that I could have a local thing. I have actually started a big Minecraft series and live streams, and I've set up a server that people can join through my YouTube channel, my gaming one. That isn't run on my laptop just because I didn't want any security issues and getting doxxed and things like that, but I have a local thing that I can just play Minecraft with my kids and I don't have to pay for server hosting. I also installed Handbrake, which for those of you who don't know, is a media encoder software doohickey. Let's say I render a video for YouTube YouTube in a specific format in 4K, I then want it in a different format uh, as an MP4 or something like that. Rather than using my main machine for that because the encoding takes up memory and GPU and whatever, I don't really want to do that. So I can just send that video. Like I said, I can access all the files and all the software through this one. I can just send it straight to my media encoder and it, it does it for me. I'm thinking of also installing After Effects on that machine and using that to render my After Effects animations and videos and even potentially using N8N automate 
integrate that with my store so people fill out a form saying I want this animation they pay it gets sent to the laptop the laptop renders the animation and then it just sends it straight back to the client all these possibilities man they're all becoming real um there's there's so many other things that I want to do with it but that is the gist of it the fact that this saves me, let's let's add it all up. Netflix subscription, Disney, Amazon, Apple TV. I canceled my Make subscription, my IFTTT and Zapier. Game Pass, I suppose you could cancel if you don't want the cloud gaming. So I'm going to throw that up there just to make the, <laughs> the numbers inflate a little bit. Uh, but Game Pass, you get rid of that and use Steam Link instead. I think that's pretty much it. If I forgot anything, include it now. And bear in mind, this is the monthly cost. Like this. <laughs> this is how much I'm not paying anymore because I pay this. There's so many other things that I want to do with this. You could probably set up yourself in the space of a week. Uh, I have children, so it's taken me like two months to put it all together, find the right software, play around with it, watch my PCs, the screens turn off. I'm really proud of it, man. Like as somebody who's just started getting into this world of tech and coding and what, what the hell are you doing? It's, it's, it's really fun to be able to create things like this and save a bunch of money along the way. I forgot to mention, I, I downloaded Meld. I've got wireless cameras, so I could just hook them up to Meld and have like either a security system or a 24-7 stream. One thing I do really, really want to do, and I haven't quite figured out how to do it because of cables, I want to connect my main PC to the laptop and use it as a secondary PC that live streams to Twitch so that that takes a load off of this one. First of all, I don't know if the laptop could even handle that. And second of all, the issue is I would need the laptop to connect through HDMI and like an Elgato capture card, for instance, and run that to the laptop. But that means I would need the laptop in here or get like a wireless HDMI transmitter, but then there's latency that you have to do with it. It's issues, <laughs> but uh, it's, it's an idea. Or even have the HDMI transmitter sending the HDMI signal to the TV in the front room. I don't know if that's worth it. But anyway, uh, I have sat here for half an hour talking about <laughs> an old laptop and how I repurposed it. Let me know if this is something you are interested in and maybe I'll make some more videos on it. If you have any ideas or solutions or you want me to try something, maybe we could make a part two for this video. I'd be more than happy to do that. But for now, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope that I've given you some form of inspiration. Check all the links down below. Subscribe to the channel for more videos just like this. I love your faces. You're amazing and beautiful and I'll catch you in the next one. I am out of breath. That was one hell of a sentence to say in one go. <laughs>